Welcome back guys, my name is Abram Mahoy and welcome to another video. It has been quite some time since we have made a video because I've been going through some school stuff, there was a lot of pressure and then I had to move away from making some videos. But other than that, we are back. So today I've got you something, uh, something interesting. So today we're going to be dealing with something called unit testing. On the screen, I have a solution which has two projects on which the first one is the calculator, which is just a class library. And then the second one, it's a test project called calculator tests. So I have calculator class open here. Let me expand this and then as you can see it does have some functions so the main purpose of this video is to demonstrate how i would test each function that this class has i'll start by showing you and explaining some of the attributes that you need to understand in order to be able to proceed and build more and more complex uh, tests let's open our test so this is is our test class on which is called calculator tests this is where we're going to be writing our test functions now let's create our test our first test function when we go back if you go back to the calculator class we realize that we do have our first function called add on which the pairs, uh, the purpose of this function is to take two numbers as, a, as parameters and then from then add them and then return the result the only part of the application that or, or the function that we pay attention to is where we do some some operations it's where we process some data do something with data now let's go to our calculator test class what we're going to do now is that we're going to write our add test so we're going to do something like this Um, it's called add test right for those who are new to, to unit testing when you write a test function there's a specific attribute that you need to put at the top of your method or function so that your test class when it runs it knows it has to um, test that particular function that is underneath it that attribute is called fact. Now, when we run this test, the test class is going to go inside this function. But if we just do something like this, when we run this thing, our test class won't even bother to get inside this thing. So consider this to be more of like an instructor to tell your test class to go inside the code or the function and process whatever is happening now let's do some basic example so we're going to create our our simple test where we add two numbers so what we're going to do is that we're going to uh, do something like this and then it's going to be let's just say 10 plus 10 and then we're gonna say maybe and then here put that result okay so a set equals it has it takes two parameters actually let me hover this so that you understand what it's saying verifies that two objects are equal the two objects are this one and this one that is the main purpose if these two if this and this are equal that means the test has passed does it make sense okay let's let's save this thing and run this thing so that you understand what is actually happening here. so we have um we have our add test in which is this class i mean this function so as you can see it's been processed and then it is successful to succeed it is done and what we need okay also you have to realize something as i've said if you don't specify a fact 
for this situation just going to be talking about the fact attribute if you don't specify fact attribute this class won't be test i mean this function won't be tested it will just be skipped but if we add something like this let's run it again let's see what's happening so you can see it's like okay let's run it first again so automatically you can see we add a test because it does have effect. right so let's remove this thing so now you understand like the importance of providing the attribute at the top of the function if you want to test that particular function now let's move on to the next one sometimes you want to test you want your test function to take parameters like or, or arguments for example instead of providing numbers like this you want to keep changing those numbers you don't want to keep saying uh, 15 14 15 you, you don't want to do that you want you you just want to configure them somewhere and then they'll they'll just be provided through all the tests if, if, if i mix let me let me just show you what i'm talking about so we do have another attribute called theory so let's hover over this thing and see what's happening marks a test method as being data theory data theories are tests which are which fed various bits or data from data source mapping the parameters on the test method mapping the parameters to the test method so now let's over over this thing it says that um theory method should have parameters basically this is the simplest way of saying it theory methods should have parameters so i'm just going to say the first and then uh, the last one which is gonna be second so we've provided the parameters now let's see what's happening theory must uh, methods must have test data so this is what i was talking about you you configure some data somewhere on which it will be provided when you run the test that data is going to be provided on the first one and the second one so now the question is how do we configure that data this thing tells us we should use inline data, member data, or class data in order to complete the theory uh, or to use theory attribute to run our test. Um, I'm going to be using inline, inline data, and then I have to provide two arguments. Reason being is that I do have two parameters on this case. So um, the first one is going to be what? 10, and then the second one is going to be 10. And then what I'm gonna do is just say first to complete. Thank you. So this is what theory is. Basically, theory also like it notifies when you run this thing. It also tells the test class to go inside the function, but knowing that there are specific data that needs to be passed through the parameters. So let's run this thing and see what's happening you can see everything is good our test works perfectly fine we can add another data on which now let's add 2020 on which this thing will be false because it will compare the result on which the result when it comes to this one it will be 40 right and then 40 is not equal to 20 remember a set equals checks if two uh, objects are the same meaning 20 is equals to result on the first one it'd be correct because 10 plus 10 is equals to 20 it will match the first one but when it comes to this one 20 plus 20 is not equal to 20 on which it will return it will produce a test failure let's save and run it So as you can see, at test with 10, it worked perfectly fine. But when it comes to 20, it, it does not. So if you pay attention to this thing, I'm not so sure if you can see. Um, no. Um, let me try, let me try. So if you can see, I'm not so sure if you can see. Okay. It says asset equals failure expected 20. This expectation is the one we wrote here. But the actual value that was provided here is 40 because 20 plus 20 is equal to 40. 
this is what it takes actually to be able to move from here and build more complex uh, tests now if we remember the, if you remember at the beginning of the video I said the main purpose is to build our Teslas to be able to test all the functions that we have here if you realize our function our, our calculator class is a static class and also it does have static fields meaning we wouldn't have to in, um, instantiate um, this class in order to be able to access the functions here and we're gonna have to create test functions for all these functions that this class contains on which we're gonna be writing test for add, subtract, multiply, and also divide. But in a waste of time, let's just do that now. Okay, so we do have a test instead of providing these values. Uh, okay, fine, we can test with these values, but instead of doing this by ourselves here, we're just gonna say calculator dot add. And then provide what first and second. So now I'm calling this function from this class, and then I exp I'm, I'm taking I'm I'm storing the result of the return view in the variable called result, and then from then I will check if or ever it is close to twenty. But in this case, that's not how it's supposed to be. So our result should be what our result should be first. Last second. Now let's save this thing and run. Let's see if it works. So it works. Meaning, you will never go wrong when it comes to this thing. Our test says everything is perfect. So now we can take this part and then integrate it at another part of the application. It will always work. We have wrote our test. It was successful. So what is left now is to write the remaining test for all these remaining functions on which is subtract, multiply, divide, and also yep, yeah, yeah, that's it. Not much of a big deal. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna copy this thing. Um okay, let me just so this one is not an add test, it's subtract. Subtract, and then here is gonna be what minus. And then instead of calculate.add, we're gonna call subtract function from the calculator class. Does it make sense? Let me just close this for now. So this one is what? This is subtract. This is add. And then we're gonna be doing some multiplication. Multiply. Okay, let's paste this code here. Oh no. Let me paste this code. So this is multiply. Multiply test. And then here we're just gonna write multiply. And uh, asterisk. The last one is divide. Paste. And uh, divide test. I'm not so sure if I've changed. We have to make sure. So divide is good. Multiply is good. We call it multiply also. Um, subtract is good. We call so call subtract. Add. Oh, okay, I think it's good. So now we have rolled all the test functions for all the functions that we contain that calculated class contains. Now we're gonna assess if however whatever's been wrote here it is a good code. Right? So we're gonna do something like we're gonna just run this thing. Let's run all the tests and see what's happening. Perfect. So we've managed to it pass a pass test, meaning all, all, all our tests are good. Meaning this code does it that is Meaning the code in calculated class works as we have expected. Um, so I'm, you, you know, after that, 
we, we, I could use error functions, but I don't know. This is like the best way of like it covers for also, for also beginners if I ever gets confusing because sometimes I've got to meet people where they say like um, some error functions are a bit confusing. So this is like the best way of just making things easier to understand it. for readability purposes. Everyone should be able to understand what is happening. Or let me let me just do it like this. Um, first let's say language. So let me reduce. So I hope you can all see. So I could have just done something like this, but some people find it difficult to understand or read them. Like it's difficult to read and understand for some people. But otherwise, that's it for this video, guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Thank you for watching. Seems like okay. Um, before I end this video. For some of you might have realized that it's been some time since I've posted a video but since now I'm on a winter break I'm gonna try by all means to push the content and make sure that I learn as much things as I can so that I keep producing content most of the things that I'm trying to learn and then push out there are the things that are hardly been taught at Versi or they don't emphasize them so other than that See you in the next upcoming video, guys. Cheers.